Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nairi, also known as Wedding Fashion Expert. This week, we are talking about Sophia Richie's wedding look, deconstructing both looks that she wore on wedding day. Before we dive into this week's topic, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below, let me know if there's a particular topic video you'd like me to create for you. I am here for you, guiding you along the way leading up to your special day. For those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. I am so honored that you have found me. I am, of course, a wedding fashion expert, stylist, buyer, and wear so many different hats at Lavella Bridal, located in Los Angeles, California. California. For daily content, please be sure to follow us on Instagram at Lavella Bridal, at Lavella Plus, and at Wedding Fashion Expert. Be sure to also follow us on TikTok at Lavella Bridal, at Wedding Fashion Expert. Let's start with Sophia's ceremony look. The first thing that I noticed on the dress, which I did mention on Instagram, is the gapping that you see on the neckline, right? So that strap, there's a gap. It's not laying flat against her chest. This caught my eye for a number of different reasons because when you are taking side photos, that is an angle that you are going to see. But I also love that it really shows brides out there that something like this component showing on wedding day is a very realistic thing to expect. In alterations, oftentimes brides expect everything to be stuck and glued to them on their body so that it looks flawless. There are no gapping, nothing really showing there, right? However, you do need to have the mobility to move arm, to really move around on wedding day. So if you made that halter neckline super, super, super tight, it's going to start to cut into your arm and be really uncomfortable. It's unknown in the tailoring process at Chanel if that's how they wanted it to look. It could also be Sophia's request to be more comfortable. It's unknown if it was designed that way, if it was tailored intentionally that way, or if Sophia requested it to be a little bit on the looser side. Something to note about Sophia's neckline, a halter neckline like that typically can make someone look and feel more broad in the shoulders. I actually love that component. On me, I really enjoy a halter neck. While yes, it does make me look a little more broad, I'm not mad at it. I like how that looks. But if you are self-conscious of your arms, this neckline is definitely not one that you'll want to consider because it is going to highlight your shoulders and arms. But I do encourage you to try it on if it's something that you're interested in. Wanted to share that with you as a stylist tip to consider. Another thing that I wanted to point out for Sophia's dress is it is a beaded lace. So something I wanted you to also also think about as a bride when you're shopping for your dress is because it has beading, it is a realistic expectation to have some chafing under the arm when there is a beaded dress like that. If you loved a dress that had beading and you're worried about chafing all night long, I would absolutely have a second dress to be able to dance the night away and be really comfortable. If you notice Sophia's second dress didn't have any sparkle on it, so if there was any rubbing or any friction on her first dress, she would be at ease with the second dress. Not saying that that dress was uncomfortable for her, just simply bringing to your attention that that is a possibility and her second dress transition was a great option versus going with a sparkle mini that would have more sparkle and create more irritation under the arm. One of the things that I loved to see on Sophia's dress because the amount of brides that request that their feet don't show when they walk is so high. This is probably one of the largest requests I get that brides don't want their feet showing on wedding day when they walk. Sophia's dress was hemmed to perfection. Chanel did an exquisite job on this. They hemmed the dress to graze the floor when she is standing still. And we see her in a video walking down the aisle. And in this video, her feet are showing when she walks. I love this because I want you to know that 
if you are wearing a dress similar in shape to Sophia's, when you walk, it's impossible for your feet not to peek out. So pick your shoes wisely. If this is of super high priority for you and you do not want your feet showing, I recommend going with a dress that has more volume at the bottom. It could be a fitted dress with a really full skirt or it could be a ball gown, an A-line, whatever it is that you want on shape or silhouette for your dress. But the fuller the bottom, the more space you have of the distance of your foot peeking out when you walk. So that would be the solution to picking a dress that doesn't show your feet when you walk. It's really deceiving because when you are trying on dresses in store, you're standing still and the dresses are too long. You don't have the opportunity to walk in them. You don't know how the dress is going to look fully hemmed until your alterations are complete, which is usually about a month before your wedding when you show up for your second fitting. The first fitting is typically two months before your wedding and the second fitting being one month before your wedding. And that's when you get to see what your dress looks like in full proportion to your body and you get to test out walking in it and really seeing how that feels and looks when walking in your dress properly altered to you. Let's chat a little bit about Sophia's train length. The train is as long as it possibly could be for a dress that doesn't have a very full skirt, right? When the skirts are fuller, the trains can be longer and wider. There's a little bit more distribution of fabric in the way in which it flows. So when it comes to Sophia's dress, her train was magnificently long for the shape of the dress, meaning that it was a more column style dress and just went straight down. Given that the train was so long and you can tell that there are multiple layers to the train. So oftentimes you'll notice designers that do a very dramatic train length for the shape and silhouette of the dress. They don't include the lining at the bottom. When it's just lace and there's no lining, it's much lighter and easier to bustle. Given that Sophia's dress had lining all the way through the end of the train, it would have been extremely, extremely heavy to bustle. That being said, because it would have been heavy to bustle, they did not think about that because it was an unnecessary thing to think about because she knew she was going to be wearing a second dress. So if you know you're going to be wearing a second dress, go for the dramatic ceremony look that you don't have to worry about functionality to be able to dance the night away. There's even a photo of her holding the train in hand because it was so big and difficult to navigate as she was greeting guests after ceremony. These are things that you want to consider when you're shopping for your dress that if you are going really dramatic that isn't functional for you to move around in and it being bustled, these are questions that you want to ask your expert stylist that's helping you, then you want to have a backup plan and a solution in place. A lot of people ask me about the loop over the wrist. The loop that trains have are actually not intended for your wrist. What that is intended for is to hang the train up so that when you put the dress in a garment bag, that the train isn't getting wrinkled at the bottom of the garment bag. It's intended to hang on the hanger so that the train is hanging in conjunction with the dress and not getting wrinkled at the bottom. So that's why that strap is there. It's not intended for your wrist. I don't really recommend for you to count on that as functionality to dance the night away. You can kind of see too how it visually looks with Sophia having the train over the arm. You're going to want your arms free to hug and greet people throughout your wedding day. So the fact that she had a second dress, perfection, good to go. That was a brilliant thing for her to do. Now let's talk Sophia Richie's veil. Everyone is losing their minds on this veil and I have to agree, the veil is truly spectacular. I love the length. I am a huge fan of a cathedral length veil. The reason why I am such a huge fan of a cathedral length veil is because when you put a short veil on, it actually creates an interruption in the overall look of the back of the dress. She did have an outdoor ceremony, so being outdoors, if there were any wind at all, a short veil is more likely to pick up wind a little bit more easily than a long veil. Here's a tip for those of you that are getting married outside with a long veil. A maid of 
Connor standing there can always step on the edge of the veil because of the distance to keep the veil down if wind picks up. So that's an added benefit to having a cathedral length veil, but it's just so dramatic, such a beautiful way to make that entrance, walk down the aisle. It's more dramatic in photos than a short veil huge fan of a cathedral veil. So for me, the length and also another thing to consider is the width of the veil. You can have a long veil, but sometimes they can be very narrow. You want it to be as wide as your train or even wider and longer than your train to really have that dramatic look. There are so many different names of what's going around of what people are calling Sophia's veil when it comes to the sparkle that is throughout it. I've heard people say that it's a raindrop veil, a sparkle veil, scattered sparkle, all sorts of names going around. It's gorgeous. We have veils like this in store. However, the one thing that I went straight to go look at is her blusher. So the blusher is the part of the veil that comes in front of your face. Sometimes it's a completely separate piece. Hers is connected. It is all one piece of tool where they've put the comb and it just drapes over. So you could do it either way. You could have it all connected and one piece of tool or a separate piece of fabric where there is a gap in between. I don't have a preference one way or the other. I think both are beautiful. I actually do encourage our brides to keep them separate for various different reasons. If you wanted to enter your reception with a short veil, what I tell my brides to do is to take the long one off and the short one, the blusher, I have you flip it back and leave that in your hair. So that's the one benefit of having them separate. So depending on the bride, I will encourage you one way or the other which way to go. When it comes to Sophia's blusher, the brilliant, design, which I have never seen a designer do this before. So huge props to Chanel for nailing this. It's it's absolutely brilliant. If you pay close attention around Sophia's face, the sparkle is not there. So the sparkle starts to fade where the tool is over her face so that she was not photographed with a bunch of spots all over her face. Absolutely brilliant. I typically recommend for my bride's blushers to not have any detail on it for that reason that it does really compete with photography. And not only that, and photo, it just doesn't translate right. Like if it had a border going all the way around, well, that's a border and a seam that you're putting in the front of you where you hold your bouquet. I also want you to think of if it was lace on the front of it, when you flip it front and back, that if it's not double-sided on each side, it translates a little bit funny. So those are the things to consider with a blusher is that it is going front and it's going back. So you need it to be double-sided or else it does look a little bit out of place that you're seeing the back of the trim one way or the other. But the way that Sophia's veil was done was so, so, brilliant. I also love the length of her blusher. Such a perfect length. I typically recommend the length of your blusher to be at your waist, so where your belly button would be, or even lower to like where your hip bone is, which is about the length of Sophia's. Any longer than that, it gets very difficult for the person who is going to be flipping it back to be able to reach that far. When it comes to the length of the blusher, the other thing that you wanna consider is the placement of where the comb is going to go in your hair. So if you have like a really high bun and it needs to clear the bun, you also need to think about that, or a crown, you also need to think about it clearing the height of the crown and also falling in front. So those are the things that you want to consider when you're thinking about the length of your blusher. A lot of brides ask where you should place the comb of your veil. Sophia's hairstylist or whoever put in her veil did a phenomenal job. They are putting it at the top of her bun. A lot of people actually like it at the bottom of the bun. I do not recommend this. It looks like the veil is coming out of your neck. The other reason why I don't recommend this is putting it right in the bun. It's really anchoring the veil so that if it got caught on any concrete or an edge, it's going to stay in nicely. So anchoring it into something, if you're wearing your hair down, 
tease it a bit, crisscross some bobby pins, anchor it in. Veils need some sort of an anchor to really stay in and not come off on wedding day, especially if it has any lace or beading or weight to it. If it has weight to it, it's going to pull even more. So her placement of the veil could not have been more perfect. Sophia's earrings were perfection for me. I love a drop earring on a bride. It really draws the attention up and the eye level up to the bride's face. However, she did let me down on any arm candy. She didn't have anything on her wrists and I do love a bride to have her engagement ring on her left hand and a bracelet. I would have loved to see a gorgeous diamond tennis bracelet or a stack of bracelets. Nothing too crazy, super dainty. It's just a beautiful little detail. It's so romantic to me. And also when you cut the cake and drink champagne, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, you have a little bit of sparkle if it's the right hand and a little bit of sparkle if it's the left hand. So I like the balance between the two. That's one area that she did let me down and I do wish that she had some sort of arm candy on that right wrist. Now it's time to talk about Sophia reception dress. I want this dress in every single color. That's how much I absolutely loved it. Obsessed with it. It's so perfect, so feminine, chic. The one thing that I bet you did not notice about her dress is the fact that she started out with the Chanel Camellia flower in the center of her bust and as she's parting throughout the night you see photos surface and the flowers gone. This is a great example for any of you brides out there that malfunctions happen on wedding day no matter how couture a garment of clothing is. That doesn't mean that Chanel is no longer producing beautiful quality. That's not what this means. It is literally so easy to hug someone, have it get snagged. It probably got caught onto something. All it is is a thread that has to snap. I have had malfunctions happen on really inexpensive clothing and super expensive things. A malfunction is a malfunction. You're using Using it. You have no idea how things are going to behave as you start to wear it. Super common for something like this to happen. I often hear of our brides with an off the shoulder or a strap if they're parting too much that it snaps off. It's a possibility and I just want you to know that it just means that you're having a ton of fun on wedding and don't let it kill your mood. Enjoy the evening, dance the night away. This is also why you want a sewing kit on hand and someone there who can quickly stitch it up and you can get back to it celebrating and enjoying your wedding day. I also really loved that Sophia came out with the second look in heels and then you see her switch into more of a flat for comfort. I think that this is brilliant. I always tell my brides you want to have three to four shoes on hand so that you can change the shoe. You are moving around more than you expect. So definitely you want to think about a little bit of comfort here. I also recommend if you're wearing a heel, bring another shoe that has a platform in the front so that you're changing changing the arch of the ball of your foot. And I do like that she started out with the heel because it does change your posture, the way you stand to get photos in that second look, looking really elegant and chic. And I also really loved the second shoe she changed into, also super elegant and chic. It just makes it feel a little bit more casual. So I love that she came out in the more formal and then switched to the casual and got the party started. Let's also talk about her hair change. I love what she did with her hair. A slick pony is a great look for the reception. I do have some brides that say that they want to wear their hair up for ceremony and down for reception. I actually recommend the opposite. You never really want to wear your hair down for reception because you're dancing, you're sweaty. You don't want your hair in the way. Hair should always go up for reception unless you are not a hair up type of person. Do not do a hairstyle that is not your typical look or vibe. I don't recommend it. But for reception, I always recommend hair up, not down. And also if you want multiple hair looks on wedding day, it's very difficult to go from an updo that's been styled to then now have it look good going down. You also want to think about the amount of time that you're sitting in the chair for this change. Your party's happening and you are missing it. So going down to up makes a little bit more sense, especially a slicked pony like this. It's super easy to do. So notice she had the bun 
all they had to do is take that down, put it into a pony, and that's not something that's going to take up too much time. All in all, Sophia's looks are a 10 out of 10 for me. I love everything about it, and what I really love that it allowed me to really show you how things are worn on wedding day. That was the most exciting part of her looks. While yes, I loved the fashion and the design, but it was so fun to have the ability to break down different things like the veil, the shoes, the fit, all of this are things that people don't often realize and I loved that this was just such a phenomenal example. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos and tips like these, please be sure to tune in every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and I will see you in next week's video.